I'm here in Agincourt now. Uh To start off this week's news, a British satellite has deployed a net designed to catch space debris successfully in orbit. The removed debris satellite aims to do something about the 7,500 tonnes of space junk that floats around the Earth's orbit. The same company are planning to test the Harpoon on their satellite, which is also part of the same mission. The scientists who designed it said that it had been very successful. SpaceX has revealed who will be the person to fly round the moon in the BFR spaceship, planned for the year 2023. This person is the billionaire Yusako Meizawa. Me I, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Anyway, he wants to take six to eight artists with him so they can be inspired to create great paintings when they come back. It will be in the BFR rocket which is currently being built in SpaceX and aims to take people to Mars in 2024. Another remarkable story now, as a narwhal has been, well, kind of adopted by a band of beluga whales. The narwhal was over a thousand kilometres outside where they expected to be found, but apparently, after stumbling across a group of beluga whales, it has found some new friends, and the beluga whales were playing with the narwhal as if it were one of them. It's unknown whether the narwhal will stay with the beluga whales, but it'll be nice to see what happens in the future. And have you heard of the Gaia theory? Yes? No? No matter either way, because it could be evolving. The idea of Gaia theory is that both organic and non-organic organisms kind of, well, evolve side by side, with both tailoring the planet to support more and more complex life. But this new Gaia 2.0 theory, developed by British professor Tim Lenton of Exeter University and professor Bruno Latour, suggests that humanity has forced in a new age, where technology must also now evolve side by side to everything else in order to maintain the balance of the world. This is a very basic rendition, so feel free to check it out in our sources, which we always link in our description. This week, a study was published in which fossils of the earliest known neodiapsid, a Permian-aged reptile from Oklahoma named Orovenator, were x-rayed, revealing details of the skull and shedding light on the relationships of early amniote groups. The researchers found evidence suggesting this animal was a nocturnal borrower and that it shared numerous similarities with the Varanopids, a group previously classified as Synapsids. The study proposes that Varanopids should be classified as the sister group to Orovenator, making them Diapsids instead of Synapsids, but also suggests further study of amniote relations is needed before the major reshuffling they propose can be truly accepted. In other paleontology news, a paper published in the journal Nature has examined a key reason for the success of mammalian evolution, getting small. Mammal lower jaws are well known for being unique amongst animals, as they're composed of just a single tooth-bearing bone, whereas other vertebrates have complex multi-bone mandibles. During the evolution of the mammal group, other bones that were present in the lower jaw moved and became our inner ear bones, and a new jaw joint was formed. This study in nature has looked at how our early ancestors could hear and feed whilst these evolutionary changes were occurring, and it had found that a small body size reduced the stresses on the jaws while feeding and allowed for the restructuring to occur. From another nature research journal comes some more paleontology news this week, as some interesting things have been discovered about the Ediacaran biota. Analyses were performed that revealed that Ediacaran fossils seem to have formed fairly complex communities, with species competing for a variety of resources and creating niches for other organisms, strong signs for a complex ecosystem. This means that these creatures were in fact more similar to modern animals than previously thought, with ecological communities somewhat reminiscent of today's. Thank you so much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. Feel free to like it if you did so, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. Either way, I hope to see you on Sunday.